Alright, in this video we're looking at Chebyshev's theorem. So here's the theorem written out, and what we want to do is to talk about um, the basic idea behind the theorem and what kind of problems it can answer for us, and then what we'll do is we'll look at a quick problem that illustrates its use. So it says if k is greater than 1, then at least 1 minus 1 over k squared times 100% of the data lies between the mean minus k standard deviations, the mean plus k standard deviations. And then I put a little note here. It says notice that k is the number of standard deviations away from the mean. So in other words, the way they form this interval here is they start with the mean and they subtract a number of standard deviations from the mean and then they add a number of standard deviations to the mean. And what it does is it gives you an interval that's symmetric around the mean, meaning that, in other words, there's an equal amount of space above the average and an equal amount of space below the average in the interval itself. And that's the kind of interval that we're talking about. This theorem tells us the minimum percentage that's located within that interval. So let's make up a problem here that will help us demonstrate the use of the interval. And then, for of course, we look at the other videos that follow that will show us how to work out different types of problems that can use this theorem. So, let's take a quick example. Let's say that the average amount of time that it takes a survey or a sample of women, let's say that it's a population average, we actually know it theoretically. In reality, we probably wouldn't know it, but let's assume we know the population average for the length of time it takes women to get ready for work in the morning. Let's say the average is 60 minutes, that it typically takes 60 minutes to get ready for work for women in the morning. Let's say the standard deviation for that um, variable is 15.8. So the standard deviation for the amount of time it takes for women to get ready in the morning is 15.8. Then from there, let's figure out an interval of time that I'm interested in. So let's say I want to know what percentage of women are going to take between 30 and 90 minutes to get ready for work in the morning. That's a pretty good interval, right? It's a half hour to an hour and a half. What percent of women will take that long? Well, I don't know anything else about the data. For example, I have no idea if the data is bell-shaped in distribution, or uniform in distribution, or for that matter, any kind of distribution. I don't know what its shape is. But what I can use this theorem for is to answer questions like this. As long as this interval is just like this interval, in that it's symmetric around the mean. Is this interval symmetric around the mean? We can check to see if it is, and that's the first thing we should check if we want to use Chebyshev's theorem. We should say, well, here's the mean. Is it smack in the middle of the interval? I think it is, because the distance from 60 to 90 is 30, right? And the distance from 60 to 30 is 30, so that means the interval is symmetric around this mean of 60. All right, from there, what we can do is determine what this k value is. Remember, k is the number of standard deviations away from the mean. In other words, how do they get from 60 to 90, right? Well, they added 30. How many standard deviations is that? Well, it's close to 2, right? Because if it was just 15, it would be, you know, 60 plus 2 15s to get up to 90, right? Because 60 plus 15 is 75, plus another 15 would be 90. That means it would be two standard deviations above average of this number, right? All right, well, the way we can figure this out is pretty simple. We're going to use a formula called k, where k is equal to the upper limit. Sorry to write that uh, u as a mu symbol, right? Upper limit. So upper limit is going to be this number in the interval. So I'm going to call that my upper limit. In other words, the number in the interval at the top of the interval minus the mean over the standard deviation. If you plug that information into this formula, you will come up with the k that Chebyshev's theorem is talking about. So let's do that then. We'll plug in the upper limit, which is 90, minus the mean, which is 60 divided by 15.8. So I'll have 90 minus the mean of 60, all of that divided by 15.8. Let's see what k turns out to be if we do that. All right, let me grab my calculator and we'll work this out. So I'll end up having 30, of course, divided by 15.8. And when we do that, we get the answer 1.8987. 1.8987. So now let's say that our k here turns out to be 1.8987. 1.8987. All right, now that we know our k, the next step of the process is going to be to take that k and plug it into this formula here to figure out the percentage that's located inside the interval. So let's go ahead and do that then. So we're going to say that 1 minus 1 over 1.8987 squared 
times 100% is the minimum percentage inside of this interval from 30 to 90. So let's see what this works out to be. So when I work that out, I'll have 1 minus 1 divided by 1 1.8987 quantity squared. Then multiplying by 100, I get the answer 72.3%. 72.3%. And so what does this say? Well, it, what it's saying ultimately is that at least 72.3% of women are going to take this long, between this long and this long, to get ready for work. So at least 72.3% of women take between 30 and 90 minutes to get ready for work, right? Take between 30 and 90 minutes to get ready for work. So that's what our interval is conveying here. That at least 72.3% of all the women take between 30 and 90 minutes getting ready for work. Let's talk about something important about this interval. Chebyshev's theorem doesn't tell us anything about what's outside of the interval, right? It talks about what's inside the interval, right? And minimum, 72%. But that means outside we could have as much, theoretically, as 28%, right? This is a minimum percent that's in the interval. Of course, we could have up to 100% inside the interval, which means outside of the interval we have at most 28%, right? Because 72 from 100 gives you 28%. So if at least 72 is in here, at most 28 is outside. One thing you don't want to assume in Chebyshev's theorem is that the amount that's outside of the interval is split up on each side equally. So say there was 28 that was outside of the interval. Say there was only, in fact, 72% inside of here. We wouldn't know that it's 14 and 14 to make up our 28% outside of the interval. That wouldn't necessarily be true. In Chebyshev's theorem, all we know is that 28% could be outside of the interval, but we don't know if it's all up here, if it's all down here, if some of it is here and some of it is here. We don't know if it's an equal amount above and below, if there is some on both sides. We have no idea about that. The simple thing we know is that no less than 72.3% of the data is inside of here. It could be much more, but it isn't going to be any less. So it gives us a minimum amount of, that the interval contains. So that's a really helpful thing, actually, in many cases. When you do the problem videos, you're going to see how many times this theorem produces an interval, um, or produces a percentage in the interval that's going to be really informative for us. It'll help us make decisions in real life just by knowing the simple quantities of the mean and the standard deviation. Because that's really all this interval depends upon. It depends upon, not this interval, but this theorem, pardon me. All it depends upon is the mean and the standard deviation. The k could be anything, as long as it's greater than 1. We don't want to have a k value that's less than 1 because then, of course, if it's less than 1, this, sense may, this interval makes no sense. If it would be something that is actually um, a k value that's actually equal to 1, then it gives us um, an obvious answer, which is just 1 minus 1, which is 0. And then it would tell you the minimum percent that's located in the interval is 0%. That's not very helpful. So we really want our k to be something bigger than 1, um, something smaller than 1, doesn't actually work because then we'd have a negative percentage and that doesn't make any sense either. So basically just make sure your k is larger than 1, construct any interval that's symmetric around the mean, and you'll be able to answer the question as long as you know the mean and the standard deviation. You'll be able to answer the question, what's the minimum percentage that's located in that interval you just created? Like this here, right? And again, of course, it's dependent upon whether we knew the actual mean and standard deviation. But if you don't know it, you can get good estimates of the mean and the standard deviation by collecting a sample and calculating the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. All right, so watch the next video. Um, the next concept video will redo a problem on the board that's actually related to this same set of data. And then, of course, you can see many problem videos solved after that.